Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Joe White, and I uh, you found your way to another Life in the Arts, which is a production of the Masterwork Foundation. And today, our conversation is with uh, with our friend D. D. Colabella, uh, who is one of the uh, mainsprings of the cultural life of the town I live in, which is Ridgefield, Connecticut. And um, so welcome, Dee Dee. Uh, but before we get started, uh, Todd Whitley, who is the executive director of Masterwork, is going to take a minute and tell you all about Masterwork. Thank you, Joe. Um, for those of us who are seeing us for the first time here, uh, the Masterwork Music and Art Foundation was founded over 60 years ago and has been supporting excellence in the arts ever since then. Today, we offer a number of awards, a premier award, which is a $10,000 grant that goes out to an artist or organization. We have community arts grants, which go out to smaller, they're smaller level awards. They go out to a number of different organizations for community-based programs. And we have this series here, A Life in the Arts, where we really like to celebrate people who have dedicated their lives to the arts in different ways um, to uh, sort of have some recognition there, but also um, provide some insights to folks who are interested in dedicating their lives to the arts. So, Dee, Dee thank you so much for joining us and sharing some of your story with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. Okay. All right. Well, so um, I usually try to figure out some way, but I'll just ask the question directly. It, the, the thing that is most interesting about most people in the arts is the path that got them to where they are, yeah. because it's rarely, um, you know, attorneys have a much more defined path, I've noted. Right. So, right. so, so how what was your path? How did you get started in this uh, challenging yes. <laughs> area well, of life? It, it is really amazing to hear all the different stories whenever you talk to somebody. I totally agree. And whenever somebody asks me, well, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing everything that you have branched out into since you started this journey? I always say, I don't know what I want to be when I want, when I grow up, you know, I'm still figuring that out and every job and everything that I've done has kind of brought me to this point. Um, I, as a little girl, I was constantly drawing. I think my first business was sitting on the street drawing, um, you know, pictures and selling them for 10 cents all the way up to trying to go to art school when I was about 10 years old by, I don't know if you guys remember getting those pamphlets in the mail that said, draw the turtle. Oh, yes. And, yeah. So mm -hmm. I drew the turtle every yeah. time, but I was 10. Um, and to, you know, going into high school, to, to, you know, working in the performing arts um, and the visual arts there. And then when I went to college, I got sold on the idea that you could not be an artist and make money. Uh, so I went the fashion route and I w went to college for fashion marketing and um, I minored in history because I had an idea that I was going to be a costume designer. And through that, I was going to sew my way to stardom making costumes for large scale productions and it was going to be amazing. Um, after college, I moved to Houston, Texas, where my parents had moved to while I was in college and they had a huge theater scene. So in there I went and I joined a theater as an employee in the costume shop and learned exactly how much I didn't know. And it was uh. a lot. <laughs> so then my life took a bunch of different court, like, Twist, twist and turns, I would say. And right about this time, um, graphics were becoming the thing. Um, Adobe had been introduced. It was still, you know, in the preliminary stages of Photoshop. Um, and, so, you could, and you could still afford it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I basically got a job as a technical writer, which I'm dyslexic. So God only knows how that happened. 
And through that, I would also branch into doing ads and things. And to, I that job led me to be the VP of marketing, where I did events and ran all the graphics in that um, area. Then I got married. I had my kids and I decided, well, I can do graphic arts from home. So started yep. developing web pages. When my kids went to school, I'm like, okay, I want to go back to work. Now what? So I decided to go back and get my master's in fine art. I had to finish up some undergrad degree credits, did that, um, went for my master's in fine art. And through that process, one of the things I loved, it was right up here at WestCon because I had to stay local for the kids. Um, one of the things that I loved about that program was we had a studio. It was a very collaborative experience. There were studios all around um, and I really learned more from watching the other people paint, collaborating with them, watching what they brought to their art. I learned more that way than I did from, you know, just doing it by myself. So I had a friend in that program who was around my age and he had a vision for art, you know, um, education so we kind of got together and said, well, why don't we try this? And I opened up RPAC Art Center and RPAC Gallery both in 2019. Um, one being a studio space slash classes, right. one being a gallery. Mm -hmm. um, and then in about 2021, there were- I, 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 I have to in interject something here oh, that, uh, that un unlike the- sort of standard thing of how an organization like that would get started. This is on main street. Yes. This is upfront full storefronts. And uh, you know, this is uh, not something that anyone who lives here in Ridgefield can go for very long without noticing. <laughs> yeah. And that was important. I mean, location, right. works, you yeah. know, but I would say, um, you know, our idea was to create a 360 artist, you know, somebody who could work, sell their art, have a place to work, have a community, sell their art, and be able to learn from other people in their community by taking classes. And then, of course, bring other people into the art. So that was the original, you know, that was the idea. And that's sure. what we do. Um, and then after a while, I really felt like there were artists who were being kind of hidden in between showing so many artists at one time. So I opened up D. Colabella, Fine Art down the street, another storefront. And that only shows one to three artists at a time. So you can see a broader body of work. Right. And we've brought in people from New York and Australia and really um, upgraded the, you know, the um the quality of curation i should say you know the art the, there's fantastic art everywhere but the quality of the curation is much mm. more considered in de colabella and um the last thing was of course creating an arts magazine so in 2020 we had an opportunity to purchase um well, Ridgefield, it was Ridgefield Magazine at the time. Ridgefield yeah. Magazine and Moulton Magazine. Yep. And we were spending a lot of money on advertising anyway. So we said, okay, let's do this. And the person who was in charge of education also worked in magazine for a long time. And we decided to combine Ridgefield and Moulton Magazine, create 068, and have a huge focus on the arts really focus on all the arts in Ridgefield that's made us the first cultural district. Um, you know, the theater programs, the music, the mm. um, visual arts really focus on that part of our community while still keeping it a lifestyle magazine. Yeah. So well, that's, and if, where, that's how I came to all <laughs> Well, and oh. the thing, if people aren't familiar with Ridgefield, Connecticut, it's a uh, kind of an amazing place. If you, um, if you simply traverse the main street and you don't even have to go very far off in any direction. Uh, we have a venue for uh, popular music, 
um, I, although, it, it, and, and that's that's changed over the years. Because when I first got here, I used to refer to it as where all the geriatric rockers go. But um, yeah. there's much broader sense. I I I saw my wife and I saw Lady Smith Black Mazambo a, a couple of months ago, who are right. wonderful. Um, yeah. And there's world music, and they also do the live broadcasts from the Metropolitan Opera and the National Theater. But right. we've got a um, – we have an equity professional musical theater. We've got an mm -hmm. amateur theater group. Uh, yeah. We've got a major contemporary art gallery uh, down the street, uh, plus all of the historical stuff, which is – it's oh and we are the smallest community in america with a full professional symphony orchestra exactly and it is it's really incredible um i i right you know i moved here um i had my kids here and now they're turning 17 and i don't think i'd be anywhere else mm. and i think one of the reasons is because of the support of the arts in this community I mean, yep. all kinds of arts and the creative minds and the entrepreneurship in this town is just, I think, unmatched. Right. Well, and again, it's not just that people, uh, you know, the, it's that there have been enough entrepreneurial sp spirit to actually create these institutions as right. real things rather right. than, gee, uh, where I, in other places that I've lived and, you know, we've had uh, professional theater companies that last two years and then buy. Right. Uh, and um, I'm, you know, so this is just a, a wonderful place. I, I can literally walk from where I live uh, about a mile and I, I have choice of all sorts of wonderful things to go and do and see. Right. Um, and, well, I was going to say, we, we first met at D. Colabella uh, with my wife and I buying a sketch. Um, it was an art. Anyway, it's over was there. Was it Christian Siriano? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so Christian is, um, for anybody who doesn't know, a very high-end fashion designer. Right. Won the first season of Project Runway. Um, and the first season, yeah, I think it was, the first, well, one of the seasons of Project yeah. Runway anyway, and is now a mentor for that show. Fashion Week, he dressed yeah. Kamala Harris and the um, State of the Union in that beautiful purple suit. That was his design. He's just everywhere. And through that, part of the artistic journey of creating a beautiful dress or fashion piece is a sketch. And I find fashion illustration just a beautiful art. So we brought in Christian and he had some paintings and some, you know, fashion sketches that he had created and they're just wonderful. And that's one of the things that I think I like to illustrate to people and to anybody wanting to get into the arts is that, there's a painting, right? You know, everybody knows about a painting or a sculpture. And sometimes the blinders are on to all the different art forms. Mm. You know, fashion sketching is an art form. Product design is actually an art form. You know, there's so many set design. You know, I have an idea at one point to have a complete set built in the... um gallery and will it sell no but just to open up people's eyes like this is an art form you can create art in so many different ways and you can find yourself in the arts in so many different ways um and i think people sometimes have very you know oh it's a gallery there will be paintings that's not what we do we do a lot of different kinds of art forms I was going to say the other thing that is really important in all of that is that um, uh, you were, we, we were at an event uh, for business people about marketing a few weeks ago. And one of the things that um, Didi mentioned was that the, um, that a lot of people I think have, you know, particularly of a, a high end gallery, they have a certain vision of who, 
should be the proprietor of that and yes. should be <laughs> and they should be sort of looking down your their nose at you uh, if at you peon who've uh, oh just give us your money and we'll provide you with something right <laughs> right um and... and it's so delightful that that's not how de colabella is at all it's no and i think that's really important when you're marketing or just finding yourself in whatever you do you have to be authentic and right. um i'm an artist myself i don't just collect i don't just sell art i do art myself and i find that the truer you are to anything you do in life the more oh. successful you're going to be so trying and to and in fact i was going to suggest that you might want to turn the camera just oh, yeah. a little bit and share yeah. so what's behind you're you. asking this is a piece that I did that's actually chalk pastel mm. uh, with a lot of fixative. So it wouldn't go away. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I also paint in oils. I also do some sculpture, um, my own collection. You know, I have artist imposter syndrome, if anybody out in the audience understands that um, statement. But, you know, it's a, oh, I'm not really the artist. They're the artist, you know, but. Um, <laughs> I think that's one thing that we strive to break, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you find yourself in a piece, if you can find yourself in what you do, you are that piece, you are right. that artist, you are that creator. And that's one of the things that I tell everybody, you know, it's just about finding what you want to say, who you are in that, whatever you do. Well, in our journey with A Life in the Arts, we've seen a lot of different uh, areas of visual arts. And for some reason, my next two interviews are also going to be from the visual arts. So we're getting a, a wide variety, actually some very fascinating people, including an historical illustrator um, yeah. who also his sideline was doing historical reenactments. So oh, uh, fun. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, and the, and also, uh, and this is a person who's uh, been around masterwork uh, even longer than I am. I have, but um, I, we have a, a woman named Carol May, and she and her husband create. Well, we lost him about two years ago to cancer, but uh, they create monumental sculpture. They create oh, wonderful. gateways into large state parks and uh, and playgrounds and stuff. And one of my sort of little secret ambitions is that I want something of hers here someday in yeah. Richfield for the kids to go play on. So anyway, um, so you had some stuff to show us and uh, we would love to see that. Yes. So um, one of the things that I'm going to do is share my screen, if you guys don't mind here. Uh, absolutely. That's... And uh, entire screen. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I wanted... Oh, sorry. Um, bear with me is to talk about is, you know, De Colabella. So whenever um, I'm talking about curating a show, oh, sorry, I'm just clicking on things. Um, whenever I talk about curating a show, I really like to kind of look at different kinds of shows. So the show that we're currently in is this perception in a state of flux. So the two artists that we're showing, one is Charles Goldbranson, who does these incredible layered oil paintings that are mm. abstract. And the process is incredible to watch. They're very surreal in the fact that you don't know if you're looking at something organic. Um, but then who to pair somebody like that? Another abstract you know, I felt more like he matched this surrealist artist named Peter Lafloc. So his art is very, again, surreal, beautiful. Um, not quite sure if you're looking at, you know, the combination of elements in there. 
So I really appreciate that. But this show being up, oh, I did it. I hate that. Okay, shoot. There we go. Um, so this runs until November 10th, but just to give you an idea of like where we're going next is we have a um, show focusing on photography, but not just regular photography. These two photographers are a little bit different. And one who is Dylan Miller does these incredible micro landscapes. Mm. And what I mean by that is this area, this photograph is probably about this big, you know, probably a couple okay. inches by a couple inches. But the way he takes those pictures, it looks like a full mountain with a little tree on it. And that's actually a mushroom. Mm -hmm. And then the other person that we have showing, her name is Deborah Berger. And her process is to take a negative and then colorize that negative of the plant. Mm -hmm. And you get this really beautiful um, luminosity to her work. And it's just wonderful. And in this show, we're pricing for the holidays. We have a lot of prints. So doing things that kind of keep people saying what's going to be next is something I've always loved to do in this area. So I would like to, you know, say that regardless of what art you create, I'd love for artists to reach out for me. I'm always looking for artists from different areas and I'd love to support and have you come in and see the space. Okay. The other um, area that I wanted to show you is one of the things that we um, focus on is classes and supporting our artists and spaces. So originally our gallery was on Main Street and we've now moved our workspaces and classes down to Main Street because nobody knew we had classes which we were a little bit hidden up there. So we moved down and this area, we do something very different than anybody else in the way of classes. We have something called instructor led studio art sessions. And the reason this sets us apart from a lot of the other things is an artist of any level can come in and say, I want to work on a landscape today and that instructor is trained in all the different disciplines and they can help them work on that while helping somebody else work on a portrait while what helping somebody else work on an illustration so one class time is still taught by an instructor and led but the artist gets to really refine the skills that they want to refine and work on the things that they want to work on. And right. if they're new, we have something called creative exploration where the instructor can give them a project to try and work on. So we kind of do things differently. We don't try and fit the artist into the mold of class. We let the artist choose where they want to go. And that's really something different that we developed um, here and we have sometimes eight people working on eight different things at the same mm -hmm. time with one instructor and that instructor will help them reach that those goals mm -hmm. um and the only other thing that i would say is um when it comes to marketing your business and um really kind of being seen in 068 one of our um, features one of our normal local highlights it's called art in the spotlight right. and we do this to focus on the arts and to bring out different things for example in the October issue um, we had the carver of gravestones as our mm, no I remember him spotlight. yeah you know um, so looking at you know stone carving We've had quilters, 
you know, and as our artist in the spotlight, our, you know, art form, we've had impressionistic art, we've had jewelry making, you know, so whatever art or um, we've had costume makeup, uh, you know, makeup. And so whatever area of art that you're in, we consider you an artist, you know, and we like to highlight the different kinds of art. And again, the same mission as Nicola Bella are kind of all of our businesses kind of do the same thing. We like to show people that art is art, regardless of how it's shown. Well, I was going to say that the, um, 068 has really become a wonderful, I don't know, not it's really like part of the heartbeat of this community in a way that, um, uh, you know, I, we used to have Ridgefield magazine was just fine. Yes. It was a nice, uh, lots it of, lot, lots of lifestyle magazine, lots of real estate ads, which that's the, yeah. that's the bread and butter, but yeah, you know, but at any, but this really, uh, and every time an issue arrives in my mailbox, it's, uh, the best thing I can say is that I really don't know what's going to be in there. Oh, yeah. We we really try and keep it interesting. And that's the thing. We really spend a lot of time and effort saying not our customers are not only the 1% who want to know who is at what gala. Yes. Our customers are not only the car heads that want to know what the next cool car is. Right. Our customers are not only the artists, our customer, you know, our community is made up of so many different people mm -hmm. with so many different interests that we really feel like, well, let's figure out something that's interesting. One of my favorite um, sections of the magazine is, is that a thing? I, I love that section because we really try and again, hit things that are unusual that people may not think about. So the, is that a thing, for example, um, you know, the pumpkin chucking. <laughs> it's, you know, literally they mm -hmm. catapult pumpkins. Yes, I know. <laughs> for distance, it's amazing. You know, who would have ever thought of that? You know, mm -hmm. run a chicken. <laughs> the um... You know, goat yoga. You know, it's just I um I, I also somebody told me the other day that in colonial America uh, that you would rent pineapples so oh. that you could put a centerpiece on your table. There you go. But you'd had to return it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was rented because yes. <laughs> they were that, so expensive. That <laughs> but, is amazing. You know, and again, every you no, know, every, every time the, the magazine arrives, it's uh, you know that there's going to be something to to astonish you, and I, that's really that's the best thing. And the other thing that I always love is that uh, you uh, manage to uh, corral Jack Sanders uh, yes. <laughs> to. to her, uh, who knows more about our local history than anybody. Uh, and, right. Uh, and, and, you know, we've been pushing him, you know, like, yeah. awesome, you know, a lot of his ideas, you know, are definitely, we say, come up with something that's kind of off the beaten path because yeah. we all know Main Street and what it's been through. So really kind of pushing him to come up with the ideas like the street names, where all right. the street names came with. That was a wonderful one. Talking about um, the house with the Bennett boys. And we, in fact, had the owner of that house. He just bought that house, the Bennett boys house, which was a local gang, crime gang. Right. Um, that was in the like 1860s, sometime around there, I believe. Mm. And I may be speaking, I'm sorry if I don't remember that correctly. But in any case, that house still stands in Ridgefield today. It was bought by somebody. They saw the article. They asked to have it printed. So we did a beautiful spread for him, got it framed and printed, and it's hanging in his house, mm. that same house. So... Right. 
you know, going a little bit off the beaten path with the history, I think is more, you know, re yeah. really interesting. And Jack loves it. He absolutely yeah. loves the history of this town. Mm. So it's wonderful to have him. Yes. Anyway, well, thank you so much for sharing. I mean, all the different things that you're that are going on and um i'm going to s just predict that there'll be something next time we talk that we didn't know about yet today yeah <laughs> so. i always like to have fun you know i i really will say i mean one of the things that's coming up you know, which I encourage everybody to come out to would be the 068 in Lounsbury House are partnering up for the second annual turkey pardoning in Ridgefield. Okay. So just, you know, just like right. the president pardons a turkey um, for the kids, we're going to be pardoning a turkey and Rudy Marconi, our first selectman, is going to be officiating the pardoning. And we've got, um, last year we had Nugget pardoned. It was our first year. This year we're having Pepper pardoned. Okay. We'll be on, at the Lounsbury House on the 24th. And it's, of course, to raise money for the Lounsbury House Veterans um, Memorial Fund and also for the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. So we love to give back and do things that are fun and a little quirky and you know, something that maybe nobody thought of, but, you know, Thanksgiving doesn't get enough love. And I think a turkey should be pardoned for okay. that. All right. Well, so thank you so much for sharing our, your, all these wonderful things that you're into. And uh, usually what we do to, there he is, <laughs> he's been listening. So uh, Todd, if you would like to uh, take us out. Thank you, Joe. And Dee, Dee, I think you are the definition of a creative driving force. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you have so much going on. It's amazing. Yes. Um, and how lucky Ridgefield is to have you. Well, um, you. As as we have been lucky too. So um, thanks for um, sharing some of your some story with us. This video will be up on our YouTube channel. Um, and you can find out more about Masterwork at masterworkarts.org. As Joe likes to say, you like, share, follow us on YouTube and um, uh, see other more interesting videos just like this one. All right. Well, thank you again for having me. Right. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Goodbye.